Look, Domini, that's what you call a priest. I said, look, Domini, I'm interested in religion and I'd like to come along and have an exchange of views, sharing God's word. So, you know, that the person on the other side, he can sense it, that this person who's speaking to him, now mind what meticulous English we speak, he can sense it from our tone, intonation, that this guy is an Indian. As much as you, when you come to Durban and you speak to me English, I can make out you are a Kiptonian. You must say, how? I said, look, I know. You and the way you speak is something different from the way we speak. It's same English, same language. But even then, there's something in your tone that tells us you are a Kiptonian. You don't realize that, but we do. You know, as much as you realize that this guy's come from Natal. So the guy senses that this guy's an Indian. He says, sorry, it's very busy, no time. Number two, sorry, very busy, no time. Number three, sorry, mm-hmm. Number four, five, six, seven, eight. I was persistent. I had the patience and the perseverance, you know. I wanted to practice a bit of Afrikaans. So I must find a customer. So the number 13th was my lucky number. Usually it's the unlucky number. You know, for Westerner, 13 is a very unlucky number. You know that. On our airways, there is no row number 13 on any of our planes. If you don't know, next time you travel on the plane, check up. There's 12. 14, 15, 16, there's no 13 row in any South African airway planes. You didn't know that. We are, they're so superstitious. Blocks of flats, they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, no, 12A. And there's no 13, 12A. <laughs> you know, this 13 is an unlucky number, and Friday the 13th is double bad luck. You see? So, number 13 happened to be my lucky number. And according to appointment, appointed time, a Saturday afternoon, I went to meet this Dumini van Heerden of the DRC. He met me on the veranda, and he sought permission, if I didn't mind, he said, to have his father-in-law along in the discussion. Oh, I said, not at all. So he took me into his library, and I began with the question. I said, Dumini, what does the Bible say about Muhammad? And without any hesitation, he said, nothing. I said, why nothing? Does not the Bible speak about the rise of Soviet Russia? He said, yes. About the coming into being of the state of Israel? He said, yes. And about the Pope, the beast 66? He said, yes. Then I said, what does it say about Muhammad? He says, nothing. I said, surely it must have something to say about this mighty messenger of God who made it possible for 700 million people to believe in Jesus Christ. So the Africana, his father-in-law from the free state, he said, you know, my boy, I didn't have my beard then, you see. So he said, you know, my boy, he said, I have been reading the Bible for the past 50 years. If there was any mention about Muhammad, I would have known it. So I said, are there not hundreds of prophecies in the Old Testament regarding the coming of Jesus Christ. So the Dumini said, not hundreds, but thousands. I said, look, I'm not here to dispute a single one of those thousands that you're talking about. But can you t show me one place out of the thousand prophecies in the Old Testament about the coming of Christ? Show me one place where it says that the name of Christ, Christ is a title, it's not a name. When Hazrat Isa Islam was born, Jesus Christ, when he was born, he was not named Christ. He was named Jesus, according to the Bible. Actually, Esau in Hebrew, Isa in Arabic, Isis in Afrikaans, that's nearer to Arabic and Hebrew. They have Latinized it by adding a J, but we won't go into that. In the Gospel of St. Luke, we are told, it says when he was eight days old, he was circumcised and named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. What was he named? Jesus. So the word Christ is a title. It's not a name. He was named Jesus, not Christ. So the prophecies are about the coming of a Messiah, translated Christ. But I said, is there a single place where he's mentioned by name? That the name of this Christ who is going to come, his name will be Jesus. That his mother's name will be Mary. His supposed father will be Joseph the carpenter. That will be born in the reign of Herod the king. In Bethlehem and so on. Is there any such details? He says no. 
Then he says, how do you know that those thousand prophecies refer to Jesus? He says, you see, you have to reason. You have to deduce. You have to infer. I said, what you're actually doing is you're adding two plus two, adding two and two together to get your answer. He said, yes. You are reasoning. He said, yes. So I said, look, why shouldn't we do the very same thing about Muhammad? In a thousand prophecies, you don't find a single place where the man is mentioned by name, and yet you say those thousand refers to Jesus without name. Why do you expect me to show you in your Bible Muhammad spelled out M-U-H-U-M-M-E-D? Why do you ask me? Why do you demand from me that? At that time, I didn't know. My knowledge was limited. I didn't know that Muhammad is mentioned by name. Wallah, he's there by name. But it is in the original. You see, in the Song of Solomon, in the Bible, in Hebrew, chapter 5, verse 16. Chapter 5, verse 16. In Hebrew, that is supposed to be the original language of the Old Testament. This is what it reads. It's a hikko mamittakim vi kullo muhammadim zehdudi vi zehrei bainat Jerusalem. Muhammadim im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. You take that out is Muhammad. Muhammadim is there in Hebrew. But they translated it into English as altogether lovely. That my beloved is altogether lovely. Now when you say altogether lovely, you can't imagine that it's Muhammad. And in Afrikaans, I was looking up the word, it's very difficult for me to pronounce. But I tell you, it's so funny, you know, the translation of that altogether lovely. That most of you, you can't even pronounce that Afrikaans. It's so high above your heads. You can never guess, in a thousand years, you keep on reading, uttering that phrase. You'll never know it's talking about Muhammad. But in the original, the word is Muhammadim. But I didn't know it then. So, I said, you see, if we are reasoning about Christ, why shouldn't we reason about Muhammad? So he said, no, that is quite fair. So I said, please open Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. Now in the booklet that is given to you, when you go home, look up this verse. And master this verse. Because look, the days of the professionals are over. I'm telling you, it's not the professional's job. You say, why don't the sheikh propagate Islam? Why don't the imams propagate Islam? Why doesn't Ahmadidat do this? No, no. Each and every Muslim must get involved according to your capacity. And I can't imagine that people who are responding in such great numbers to these lectures, that you're not coming here to be entertained. You want to get some knowledge that you can use. And we are giving it to you in black and white. What I'm talking to you now, it is in that book. You go home, look it up. Write it on a piece of card, put it in your pocket, and memorize the verse. Memorize it. Once you memorized it, repeat it, repeat it. Then every opportunity you get, practice it. As the Christians are doing on you, you do the same. We must share. They want to share the heaven with you. We are prepared to share more than that with them. You know, our curry and rice, as well as heaven on the other side. They can only share heaven. Cost them nothing to give heaven to you. You know that. He is not prepared to give you a cup of tea or bhajjas or samosas. Never. But you go to the Muslim's home, they come along and they eat our food, they eat our biryani, our samosas, our tea, and they want to make nests in our head. Now look for a change. It is about time that you start sharing something more than heaven. Heaven costs you nothing. But at least share something more than that. Your, your kusistas, you know, and your tea. So I'm asking the Dumini, I said, please open Deuteronomy 18, 18. And when he opened it, I said, look, I'm trying to learn it in Afrikaans, and if I am, I would like you to correct me.